So, hi, how are you? Good? Yeah, nice. Okay. So, when you think there is no time for learning or coding, and first questions, how many of you inside here are coders, developers, or whatever you want to call yourself? Yes, or designers, or freelancers? Yes, now we have some more hands. Cool. Uh, if you can't hear me, it's because I don't know how to use this. Yes. Yes. I don't know how to use this, but anyway, we will figure it out. So, my name is Eleftheria. As you already understand, my name is Ms. Freedom. So, if you forget it, just go to Google Translator, type Freedom, translate it to Greek, and you will get my name. Yeah. Uh huh. Separator? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Happens all the time. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, two, no. Yeah, so just l l hold it like this. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, if you want, you can check me out on the social media. I'm very active on Twitter, and maybe it's the easiest way if you want to connect with me. But of course, you can find me there, ask me whatever, like, yeah. So, um, I am an app developer, but uh, I started as an engineer. I finished the Polytechnical University, which is five years. It means that I did a lot of maths, a lot of physics, but not a lot of coding. And I'm still a student, as I'm still doing my master's. This time is more focused on design. And I also do a bunch of other things, like sometimes I'm freelancing, sometimes I'm creating YouTube videos, sometimes I'm writing articles, so I like to keep myself like always doing stuff. The things that we are going to see today are my coding journey, so we'll talk about myself, and then we will continue with tips and techniques of habit formation, and last but not least, dealing with frustration and stress. So. Uh, as I mentioned, I started in this Polytechnical University that I did maths and physics and blah, blah, blah. And then I did an internship and I saw that I'm more interested in the front end developing stuff. But as I was doing that internship, I also realized that I'm not good enough and it's going to be very hard for me to find a job. One thing is that back then and still now, and in that time I was in uh, the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, back then I was reading every morning from Medium quite a few articles. And one day I found an article that it had something between the lines of 100 days of code. And please raise your hand if you know the challenge 100 days of code. Yes! Nice! Because usually I ask that questions and I only get two, three hands, but now we got like more people. Anyway, so I read an article and it was about the challenge 100 days of code. It was written by the creator of the challenge, Alexander Calway. And in this challenge, he says that it's very beneficial because eventually you will build a portfolio and of course you will gain some knowledge. So the next thing I did was, heck yeah, challenge accepted, let's do this. I started coding every day as I was, as I wanted to be better, as I wanted to find a job, and like I wanted to be good in what I was doing. The things that I had to do, and in general, if you want to participate in a challenge like that, is code one hour every day for at least 100 days. And after that, you should always upload your code on GitHub or somewhere else that it's publicly available. And the last thing that you have to do is use Twitter, use the hashtag 100 days of code and try to 
talk with somebody, maybe give them feedback or ask for feedback or encourage them or stuff like that. I have to admit here that at first I was very nervous on using Twitter. Like I had an account there, but I was barely using it and I'm a little bit shy. So I was like, okay, how am I going to talk to that person? But eventually it's very easy. Trust me. We will talk about that in, in a bit again. So these are the rules. Now, what was am I? What were I going to code? There are a lot of things, and as I was using Twitter more and more, people were asking me the same question: like, what are you coding? And if we want to do the same things as you, like, from where can we find something to code? There are endless possibilities, like endless possibilities. If you want to learn something, there is always a way to learn it. The first thing is like online educational platforms. And here I mean things that you already know, Udemy, Udacity, Free Code Camp, all these things like have free courses and they are good. Another thing, of course, is YouTube. Because why not? You can find there again free stuff, maybe for beginners, maybe for more advanced person, but there is always something good in there as well. There are online communities, and uh, here I mean things like Stack Overflow. And there are some other coding challenges, like for example, I mentioned 100 days of code, but it's not only that. It's like JavaScript 30, it's uh, daily CSS images, that like either you get an email with the prompt that you have to code something, or a link to a website that you have to learn something, or even a video. And there are also magazines and books. For magazines, personally, I like to read more like from Medium or Dev2 and other stuff. And for books, if you're interested in the same path as I want, as I was, so like maybe a lock in JavaScript is one of the best books. As for inspiration, because a lot of people say, yes, I want to be a front end developer, but again, what should I code? Then again, I would suggest to read blogs, browse forums, Follow your favorite publications and your favorite developers on social media, like stalk them, try to talk with them and do all these kind of things. And of course, go to meetups and attend to conferences. I'm pretty sure that you already do that because you are here. But yeah, do that more. Yeah, you can see a lot of things. All right. So. What did I learn and what was like my main focus? If you read in every, in every job description, they will have the word like rockstar or superstar or something like that. So you have to be a superstar, a rockstar to find a job. It is quite difficult, but you can. Uh, I wanted to be a rockstar in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then I wanted to learn quite a few more uh, things like uh, SAS, LESS, and maybe some frameworks. As for frameworks, I started learning AngularJS. Now I know that it wasn't such a good decision, uh, but back then I didn't know that. And also I learned um, a data visualization library called D3GS. That was a good decision because that's how I started working also as a freelancer. And one very important thing was to stop being afraid of the developer tools or the console. And I know that a lot of young people like see the developer tools or the console like a black box and maybe they see other developers like using it but they're quite afraid of that or they don't know what all these tabs are, but eventually you will figure it out. And there are so many online tutorials, again, for free, that you will get all the knowledge that you need. Let's see some more examples of the things that I build. As I wanted to be better at HTML and CSS, I took part in another challenge called Daily CSS Images. That challenge were, was for 50 days, and for this 50 days, you were getting an email with something that you had to code only using HTML and CSS. So I started doing that. 
my very first uh, sketches or designs were really simple, like really simple, and everything that you see here is truly built only with CSS. But eventually I started learning it more and more. I started to devote more time and I think, or personally, I think that some of my final designs are quite better. Now, another thing is, of course, JavaScript. And to start learning JavaScript, I wanted to build some simple games, because I like playing games, so I thought, why not actually building these games? And the inspiration behind this game, for example, it's coming from FreeCodeCamp. Do we know FreeCodeCamp? Yeah, nice. <laughs> So I started also like using more and more free code camp and I was trying to do the challenges from there. So this one is coming from there as well as this one. And then I started working with AngularJS. Now, for those of you that are not very familiar with AngularJS and why it's now a bad decision, it is because AngularJS is going to be deprecated in a few years. So yeah, if you're working professionally without it, it's not a very good decision. But anyway, um, and then I also started learning D3GS. And I think that the inspiration behind that is also coming from FreeCodeCamp. And this is also another game. It's called The Game of Life. Uh, do we know The Game of Life? Yeah, nice. You're a good audience. You know a lot of stuff. Cool. So uh, this is a game that you're actually not playing with it. You have to build it and then like you just push a pattern and it plays. And uh, for me, this was a hard game. And I know that other developers may find it easily. But for me, I couldn't understand the, or the rules. I couldn't understand the algorithm. So first I had to figure out this kind of things and then eventually build this game. So I remember that th that was a process that it took me some times where I was seeing in uh, forums that people were building it in a couple of hours. But no, I wasn't one of those people. Eventually, this is one of the latest things that I have done. And I took part in another challenge called Daily UI. And that challenge was also about not only coding, but designing. And it was 100 days, this challenge as well. And this is the last project that I did. Uh, it was more focused on designing, but I'm also an app developer. So my mind was also on building things for mobiles. So I tweak a little bit the challenge and I started coding specifically for apps. And the last challenge was to recreate the page of the challenge. A bit tricky, but yeah. Anyway, so let's see what I've done as far as challenge is concerned, because I did quite a few things and that shouldn't have happened. Okay, okay. We got this. So the first challenge that I did was 100 days of code. And if you notice the day that I started, it just one day before 2017, which means that I didn't have anything better to do that day. More people are outside partying, drinking beers, but no, I was home and I said, yes, I will start a coding challenge. And if you also notice the third one, which is daily CSS images, that one is on Valentine's Day. I didn't have anything better to do. Yay for me. Anyway. And then I continue with some more challenges and more challenges and more and more and more and more. Um, the last one, 100 days of YouTube, is when I also started working a little bit more with YouTube. And for 100 days, I was uploading every day videos on YouTube. Most of these videos are like tutorials and how-tos, and they are about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And the last challenge that I did was daily UI that I finished it this August. 
Now, a lot of people, again, uh, were asking me, mostly through Twitter, what inspires me or what motivates me. And this answer can be different for any one of you in this room. But for me, it was just the need of being better and doing something better. Like, I get it that not all people are about that. Maybe some people, for example, want a promotion, so they just need to be a little bit better to get the promotion. Or like, um, I don't know, they want to to get some extra money, so they want another job, so they want to have some more skills. But for me, it's just knowing that if you are quite good at something, why not trying a little bit more to be that extra good? That was my goal back then, and this is still my goal of being better, of doing the best that I can. A quote here, you are the average of the five people you are most associated with. I think that this is a quote that some of you inside this room may don't like that much. Maybe you find it quite arrogant. But for me, again, this quote is true. And look around you, you are among a room with other developers. Maybe you have the same goals, maybe you have the same inspirations, maybe you want the same things in life. So I think that this quote is actually quite true. What did I learn from all these challenges? Except of coding. So I learned to be more optimistic and grateful for the people I have near me and for the things that I've done. Because you know, if you're calling every day someone to go out for coffee and they say, no, I will stay home and I will code, then you need some good people around you as well. I met a lot of people and uh, most of them I met them through Skype or Twitter so not so much on uh, not so much in real life but again like I like meeting people and I'm getting some inspirations from them as well. I got better at time management and setting up my priorities and goals and last but not least I traveled quite a lot and maybe also this seems irrelevant but it's not. Like, for example, I'm, I, am, I am here in this room, I am here in Poland because I've been coding and I've been developing and this kind of things. So, uh, would I recommend signing up on a challenge like this? The short answer is yes. If you want to be better, if you want to improve at something, if you want to meet amazing people, like, just do it. And you will see all of the great benefits. Let's continue to the second part. Sorry. Okay. Tips and techniques of habit formation. So we will talk a little bit more of how you can form a habit and what can you do with that? What are the benefits of creating some habits? We will have some more quotes. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. I'm not going to analyze that quote, but let's keep that in mind. To form a habit, the first thing that you will notice is resistance. Everyone gets resistance and resistance will always be there. Like try to do something good, resistance. Try to eat healthy, no, there will be some cookies. Try to uh, go out for a run. No, it's going to be uh, too cold. I know some people have the opposite opinion and they are still going for running even if it's too cold. But most people will say, no, I'm, I'm not going for running. Resistance will always be there. Just know that and move upon that. The power of limits. Don't spray your efforts too much. Be specific on what you want to learn. Maybe you want to learn a lot of things and that's great. I also want to learn a lot of things, but you have to be very specific and very ruthless about what you really want to do. Focus on one thing on a time. Don't say, yes, I have to build um, a website, for example. What exactly do you have to build in that website? What is it going to be your first step? Are you going to do the design or someone else will give you the design? Are you going to do the login page or something else? Be really, really, really specific. 
Try for consistency over volume. And let's give the example of a, the website. Don't say that, hey, I'm going to do this um, on the weekend. No, every day work on that. Even if it's just for 20 minutes or one hour, still keep trying on working. Even if it's something very small, work on that. Don't just leave all the work for the next day and the next day and the next day. No, start doing things now. And it's better to have just a little free time rather than too much. And this also may sound weird, but again, if you have like too much time, you will say, yes, I'm going to do that later and later and later. And eventually you'll never doing things. So track your progress visually. And for me, this is an example when I was doing that 100 days of code challenge. So this is my GitHub. Your mind is connecting in in seeing things so visually your mind is connecting on seeing things it will be like don't break the chain if you did something good you will want to continue doing something good and something that you probably already know is try to keep a log or a calendar or whatever it may sound again like um okay i'm not going to do that i don't need that but it will really really help you keep um, a, a note or a calendar or whatever for me the symbol it works like best just maybe pen and paper and it will work fine the thing is that you have to write everything down and see what you really have to do track everything and start doing stay away from toxic environment Again, the example with dieting. If you are dieting, just don't keep cookies near you. Go to the groceries and just take something uh, that will help your body. And it's the same if you want to code. If you know that something is going to distract you, probably your phone, then keep it away. I think that for people that are like in, in our age, maybe one of the most important things is our phone. So keep it away. Just for that one hour, don't have it near you. Set it to silent mode or to airplane mode. Just really, really, really don't have it near you. If a survey shows that if a notification like pops up, then you need 15 minutes to concentrate back on what were you doing. And to have a notification in something like very simple, and we all have notifications, but also 15 minutes is a lot of time to go back to what were you studying. So re really limit those notifications, limit the apps, maybe look out of certain apps, or even like delete them from your phone. It will really help you, trust me. Now, some other small yet practical tips are having everything ready maybe for the next day, for example. So having your software um, updated or your codes and your passwords ready. I know it's something small, but it will really help you. And the next day that you will start working, your environment is going to be just perfect. Uh, as far as the habit concerns, usually we want like three things. And this is a loop, like an infinitive loop, but this time it's, it's a good one. It's a good infinitive loop. The first thing that we want is the trigger. The trigger is the cue. You want to start from somewhere. This is going to be the cue. Then you have the routine. The routine is the actual habit. And last but not least, you have the rewards. The reward can be either something um, physical or not. It doesn't matter. It's just that your brain wants to know that, hey, I did that. Now, what am I going to gain from that? Some rules here are maybe the bright line rules that it's getting from something general to something more specific. And I've already talked about that. So a general thing is I want to build a website, which is okay, fine. But the specific thing is going to be, I'm going to start here and this, I'm going to do this and this and this. So define what exactly you have to do. The more uh, you define what you have to do, the easiest is going to be for you to do it. And this is the way that eventually you will see all your small goals being done. You will feel more achieved and you will continue doing the things that you love to do. And this also goes with the keystone habit, which says that if you start doing something good and if you see some good results that you will see, you will not want to stop doing that thing.
Another thing is make the keystone habit so small that you cannot say no. And that's why I said, okay, if you cannot code or if you cannot study for one hour every day, at least set the minimum. Maybe this is 20 minutes. Yes, it's 20 minutes, but it's still okay. Just start doing things. And some of the most common things that you will hear someone says it's, yes, that's all good and fine, but I don't have the time. Well, guess what? We all have 24 hours, but we, we are not doing the same things. Now, let's find some time to do the things that we love to do. And trust me, you have time. Uh, be ruthless about what you want to learn and change only one or two things at a time. You cannot change everything. And this is also why like New Year, New Year's resolution are not going to work because you will say, Hey, I will change this and this and this and that. And you will be very energized, but no, things are not working like that. You cannot change everything in just one week. It takes time and start from something small. Now, set something minimum and you can always go higher from that point. A quote that I really like here says again that part of courage is simply consistency. If you feel that something is working good for yourself, keep doing that. Now, I have he here three uh, bullets that I'm not very sure that are like so well known. Then the first one says keep a note to do list. Everyone will say and me as well, like keep a to-do list, but I'm also going to say here, keep a not to-do list. Say, I'm not going to watch TV for more than a couple of hours. I'm not going to play video games for more than a couple of hours. Um, I'm not going to eat cookies and pastries all the time. Just write these things down, have them somewhere that you can always see and just keep them in your mind. Analyze your day and track your activities. You will see that there are things that it takes so much time and you haven't realized that. I'm guilty of that. I was using Instagram so much and then I said like there are in the settings that you can track your time and I said, okay, I have to step back. And I did that. So track your time and you will see that you have more time than you think you have. And last but not least, if you don't have something, imitate it. Again, an example about me, um, I didn't have a lot of friends that they were developers or coders, and sometimes I wanted to speak with somebody about this kind of stuff. So I found some communities that are all about these things. And these communities don't have to be in your city or in your country. It can be online. Use, for example, Discord channels or other kind of, cha of channels and you will find a lot of people that have the same things as you do. Uh, I will start like passing some things because I don't have the time, sorry. Um, and let's go to the second part very quickly, which is dealing with frustration and stress. It is not the strongest of the species that survive, not the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. And from this quote, keep the word responsive to change. We all have problems, but we all have to find some solutions about these problems. One of the problem is dealing with our colleagues or dealing with work or something like that. Think, is it only you that you have that specific problem and try to talk with somebody. Try to talk with your colleagues, try to talk maybe some ex-colleague, try to talk with your boss, find someone. And if things don't work well for you, then leave. Leave that place and you will find something better. Also, some people believe that they are not good enough and again, they are afraid of their colleagues. Learn how other people start, started their career and for example, now you know how I started my coding career and don't compare yourself to others. Yes, maybe some people are faster, but it's okay, you will eventually do it as well. It's not only about coding, but it's also about um, other stuff as well. Like, remember when you first started 
in your first job? Do you think that your boss hired you because you were like uh, super good at coding and you were writing clean code and you knew everything? No. No, I'm afraid no. Most probably they saw something else in you. Maybe you were good with communication. Maybe you were good with connecting with other people. So there are other stuff as well. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to pause that because I don't have time. And the last thing, truly the last thing, is dealing with yourself. Don't judge yourself too hard. We all make mistakes. We all fail from time to time. But it's not about failing. It's about waking up the next day and saying, yes, I will do that. Some other things is like always taking care of yourself. There are very basic things, but like eat good food, work out, uh, shower, take a good sleep and stuff like that. And don't act like there is something wrong with you because get what everything is cool there is nothing wrong with you and even if you're coming from a different background the developers community is great and we all want you so that was it Woo! thank you very much and if you have any question that was amazing timing <laughs> <laughs> I think no one has ever done that. You finished exactly on the gong. Yeah. Congratulations. And by the way, I just have to say, personally speaking, that the information that you're sharing is really touches me close to my heart. Thank you. Uh, the fact that I could be potentially someday uh, uh, a, a, a programmer or a developer. It's possible, guys. Don't laugh. Could happen. Okay, we have time for one question only, again, because we're running behind schedule. Someone have the most essential question? Come on, I know you someone, and I have tons of questions, but that's me. Any questions? So, where are you? Oh, of course, in this area. Please, <laughs> let's hear one question, you ready? Uh, when you're learning, have you heard about this uh, coding challenges uh, site like, um, for example, Coding Game? Or uh, coding challenge uh, where where you or um, there is also I don't remember right now but you've got a particular algorithm to the particular task or algorithm and you've got like uh, some time to uh, to do it do you do you prefer those kind of uh, sites? Uh, to do, be do you honest, know them? no, because when you have a specific time frame, sometimes like I was feeling nervous and stuff like that, so I said it's okay, I will take my own time and do it or finish it in my time. But I guess that maybe works for some people as well. But if you have like a specific time frame, that's not so much about me. Uh, well, uh, maybe I wasn't too specific about that, but you you also can do it in in uh, your time. Oh, okay uh, then. Also, so it's it's like hacker rank or coding game. Th those kind of, those kinds of websites. Uh, I don't know these kind of sites, but maybe if you want, we can chat later, and you can let me know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Eleftheria, thank you very, very much. You were fantastic you. to listen to. I really appreciate it. Her name in Greek, translate in English, translates to freedom. I just, oh, amazing. So thanks again. Thank listen, you. folks, uh, we are going to have a yes. Thank you.